What is up guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel guys this is gonna be a beginner's guide on ray Trail legends and i'm gonna have to break this down into two videos because there's so much going on um but today's video we're gonna be looking at our castle breaking all of this down on the home page and then in the next video we will look at the campaign dungeons faction walls arena clan boss and doom tower um, I'm going to chuck in loads of chapters as well. So if you already know some stuff, you know, just please feel free to skip ahead. So first off, we'll start off with the gem mine. It's a pretty simple one. You want to max this out as soon as possible. It produces gems for you every day. And as soon as you get to level three, you get 15 gems um, a day plus. So basically you'll wake up in the morning, you'll get your 15 gems and then it will produce more for you throughout the day. And the only thing we will buy with our uh, gems is energy. Energy is used for everything. You need it to level up your champions, to do dungeon runs, to do campaign, to farm gear. Energy is one of the most, most important resources in raid. So that's all we will spend our gems on. And some people are going to say, oh, but real deal. You know, if I'm only playing the game for three, uh, three months, what's the point in leveling up my gem mine? If you're playing the game for three months, it doesn't matter what you do. Raid is a long-term game. You need to invest a lot of time into it. Marketplace. Bruh, this place is a total mess. Um, it's so out of date. And that's lucky. It's literally just refresh for us. So the only thing we're going to be buying from here is mystery shards. And also... You get blue shards, um, which are ancient shards. They're 200k a pop, but they are so valuable. You only get five a month from the um, from the market. And, you know, you can get a chance to get epic and legendary champions from them. So you need to make sure you get them. And basically shards are just used to help you get champions, which can either be used as full, uh, food or it'll be like, you know, champions that upgrade your account that are like god tier and that you'll be using all the time. But like the gear, the rest of the champions in here, it's all trash. Just don't look at it. It needs a major uh, rework, but I don't see Polarian doing that anytime soon. Then we've got the Altar of Souls. So as a beginner um, player, you are not going to touch this for about six months, maybe even a year. Um, yeah, you're just not going to have any soul stones um, and you probably won't have any essences as well. But let's sort of go through this quickly. Um, so what I'd recommend is not using this for a year because you need to build up your roster. And once you've got a decent sized roster, then you can start awakening champions. So um, it's pretty new to the game. So what happens is you um, your champions will get yellow stars, which means that they've reached a certain level. And then you can purple star them, which is ascension. And then we can awaken them that makes them even stronger. Um, so if you wait for Awakening, you can see some of these champions have got Red Star, but you just click on them and then you can upgrade them. But the thing about this is you only want to invest in your best champions. So I'm end game, I'm free to play. And in a, in a year, I've only managed to max out uh, four champions fully Red Star. So that sort of shows you how difficult and how precious this resource is. So don't go nuts. Hold off, boys. And make sure that you're only investing in your very best champions. And for me, I'm only red starring, like really investing into my arena champions and a little bit into Hydra. But otherwise, just don't touch it because otherwise you're going to ruin your account. Uh, soul Collection will just show you um, souls that you have for champions. And you basically want to hold on to the mythical ones. You know, I'll probably, you, ideally, what you want to do is hold on to ones that are sort of five star, six star. Um, but some of them, like, there's always, like, an exception to the rule. And, you know, I might pull some of these champions later. Um, so they're worth holding on to. But maybe, like, you can sell, like, the one stars and stuff like that. And there's certain champions here, like, there's only a handful of rares I'd hold, hold on to. But, yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about the old souls. Like I said, you'll be looking at this in, like, six months' time, the earliest. Um, and in, in the Mystic Market, the only thing we want to buy is mortal soul stones so that's fine we can buy these in mortal soul essences we want to buy and we want to buy eternal soul essences but do not buy the immortal or eternal soul stones it's a it's a trap 
and you'll just end up wasting all these coins that you have. Um, it's just way, way better to invest into the essences. And Soul Merchant will just show you, it refreshes twice a day and you can just look at different champions you can buy. And this is the best way to upgrade your champions. So you can sort of see who's up for grabs. And in general, I'm only going to be investing into my legendary champions. There's a few niche situations where you might invest in like an epic or rare champion, but they're far and few. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. We want to try and focus on our legendaries. So next up, we've got the portal and there's a lot going on here, but this is a really, really important place. So mystery shards, we can summon commons, uncommon and rares. The commons and uncommons are just going to be food that we use to empower our champions and rares. There are loads of good rares, but you need to, you know, you'll find out how they are. If basically if you pull a champion, uh, check out a Lumi Love. Uh, if you just type into Google raid tier list, um, it'll be like one of the first ones. Click on there and it will give you like a ranking of each rare champion. You can click on them, maybe even watch a video on YouTube and like learn who's the best. So mystery shards are like the easiest to get. Ancient shards are a little bit harder. And then voids are even harder to get. And then sacreds being really, really hard to get. And then primals probably sort of on the same level as sacreds of like how many you can get on a month. No, no, actually, Primal Shards, you get a few more than Sacreds, but um, Sacreds have way better odds. So let's, uh, if you click this eye here, you can get a breakdown of like your chances of pulling a certain level of champion. So Ancients, there's like a 0.5% chance to get a Legendary. Um, there is a Mercy system as well. So if you pull, say we pull, um, you know, 200 um, Ancient Shards and we don't get a Legendary, Every shard after that will increase the chance of you of being able to get a legendary. But it's not a great mercy system, to be honest. Um, it's pretty weak. Um, weak source. But um, yeah, it is what it is. But um, yeah. And what I'm going to say, for the first year, you only want to pull champions during two times. This means you're going to have way more epics on your account, way more legendaries. And your goal is basically to try and clear Clamos Ultra Nightmare as fast as you can, like two key, one key. And you want to do that within a year because that's where you get most of your shards and books from. And they are just like, they will progress your account the most. So same, uh, so weird shards have the same percentages as ancient shards. However, um, so with ancient shards, you can get the three, the three main groups of champions, which are force, magic, and spirit. With Void, you get Void legend or Void champions who are in general way stronger, especially the legendaries. Void legendary champions are the strongest at the moment. Then we got Primal Shards, which I'll tell you a little secret. Primal Shards are just ancients that are red. Um, but with Primal Shards, there's a very, very small chance to get mythical champions. And again, I would really hold off on these i'm not going to pull these for probably about 10 months so i saved up about 100 and then i'll pull this during a 2x event because that is going to be again your best chance of getting a mythical champion and at the moment mythical champions there are like two or three that are really op really broken who are stronger than uh void legendary champions but in general void legendary champions are way stronger than mythical at the moment but that will probably change over time. And then the best place for you to get legendary champions that are non-void are going to be from your sacred. And there's loads, like there's so many strong champions and loads that have really stood the test of time that are from sacred. So, you know, this will go from 6% to 12 and that will really help bump up your account. So that's what we want to do for that. So then there's also fusions in the game. Um, there, there's some that just stay here for life and there's one that's called Razin. Unfortunately, I've used him. He's definitely worth investing in. He's great for clan boss. Um, if you're struggling on Nightmare or Ultra Nightmare, he'll definitely bump up your damage and also he brings a lot to the table. So definitely worth investing in. Um, but yeah, so there'll be fusions that are here that pop up every now and they're sort of, they'll give you like sort of two weeks to farm certain weight like you have to collect champions within like a two-week time frame and there'll be events and tournaments and then you can like fuse 
a legendary champion. The only thing I would say is you probably want to skip the first four fusions as a new account because you're not going to have the resources to do it. So it'll be a complete waste of your time to invest in it. But after that, you'll be able to start doing them. But every time a fusion comes out, watch content creators videos on them because if the champions trash, just skip them. If they're going to be a God tier or amazing, you need to go for it and really invest everything into it. Um, but yeah, but you won't know until it sort of happens. So it is like a case by case when you're looking at it. Uh, Fragment summons. So some of these, um, again, they do like a two week. Uh, so sometimes they do. This is like the classic way to fuse your champion. And Fragment Summons was like the new way of doing it. And Polarium sort of switched between the two. So you can see um, I've got some that are old that have just sort of sitting here that I'm saving for special occasions. But you'll learn about why people do that later. Late, the long, like it's not really important in the early game, but further down the line, you'll learn about it. Um, and again, they'll basically just collect Fragments and then you'll be able to fuse champions. And they sit here and you can basically just fuse them when you want. Then we've got the Great Hall. So you've got the Affinity Bonus and Arena Bonus. Um, we'll talk about the Arena one in a moment. So Affinity Bonus, in general, you want to focus Accuracy Tree first. And the way you get these medals is from by farming Classic Arena. And it's oh, we'll talk about that in the next video, but it's pretty straightforward. You basically fight people, you win, you get medals. And then you can spend them in the Great Hall. Focus the accuracy tree first. And in general, you want to start with the magic affinity first. Uh, the reason for that is most of the champions that you will get in the game at the beginning are going to be magic based champions. So you'll benefit a lot more by focusing in this part of the um, great hall. But with accuracy, um, the reason you need this is you need it to land debuff. So you'll start a champion. If you've been smart, you've picked Kale. He's a poison champion. For him to land his poisons, he needs accuracy. So the more accuracy you have, the more poisons that are going to land and do damage for us. Um, and there's all different reasons as well. So there's loads of debuffs that you can throw out in the game, like block uh, block buffs, uh, poisons, drop defense, weaken, uh, hex, loads and loads of stuff. And for it all to land, you need to have uh, accuracy. Then I would probably focus like defense because defense is great for clan boss. It's going to give you... Uh, improved survivability and then i'd go hp and then probably uh, crit damage then resistance because resistance you'll sort of need later into the game and then i'd choose attack last because uh, basically hp and defense will benefit every single champion where attack will only um, benefit attack champions but for example um, you probably do like magic and then you might do force and then spirit then void However, it just depends on what champions you pull. So if you pull like a god tier void epic champion, like say God Seeker, if I pulled her, I would start investing into like the defense tree a little bit and then HP as well. And um, she doesn't benefit from accuracy, so I'd skip that. But um, but then again, you know, this will just sort of, you know, I don't say I wonder I don't want to say like there's a right or wrong way to do this. You'll sort of, but ideally you want to focus on accuracy and then sort of work your way across. Uh, arena bonuses so um live arena you probably won't be doing it for a very long time but when you can don't worry about your win ratio as long as you are farming i think you get crests instead of medals but yeah so you get crests and you can basically spend these to upgrade your um great hall even further so what i'd recommend is um upgrading demon lord first so this is clan boss and you want to do ignore defense and probably crit damage because this is going to really bump up your damage. Um, skip speed. Do not touch speed. Uh, the reason for this is later in the game, um, there's like certain speed tunings you need for unkillable team comps and infinity shield comps and all stuff like that. And if your speed tunes are off, this, this can just make it really hard to calculate. So I'd avoid putting any speed. You can also take some defense and HP as well. Um, just to help bump up your damage and there's you can even get some more accuracy if you need it as well um but yeah and then the rest would be like my next one would be to prioritize hydra and then you can start looking at the other dungeons but i think don't worry about it for now you could look at that way 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 further into the future and then we've got the forge the forge is one of my favorite places this is a great place 
to get silver. It's one of the best things Raid ever added to the game. I'll give you a quick shout out for the gear sets that I think are the best. So Swift Parry is an amazing gear set for Arena. Deflection set's pretty good as well, but I would prioritize Swift Parry over it. Resilience is trash, so you can just sell all of this gear. Um, but if you get good substats, and we'll talk about it in a moment, then you should hold on to it because um, it will just help progress your account further. But this is a great gear set to just sell so you can get loads of silver for your account. Perception, one of the best gear sets in the game. So you get loads of speed and speed is key in this game. It is one of the best substats. So let's uh, just quickly uh, craft some gear and I'll show you what good substats look like. Okay, so this weapon, no good. No good. No good. No good. Okay, so this is a semi-decent shield. Ideally, it would have speed on it. And then we'd have crit rate and crit damage. This would be a great set for a nuka. Um, but yeah, it's not not good enough for my account. All right, this has been a complete... Okay, here we go. So this would be a really good shield. I would keep this. If you could get a double roll in speed, that will just make your champions so much better. And the faster your champions are, the more turns they can get, the more, you know, um, like healing they can get as well. And we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, these gloves though um we'll talk we'll have to talk about gear in a little bit because it's a big big subject but yeah so perception great great gear set so not only do we get speed we also get accuracy again land those debuffs the next sets that are really really good but you won't be able to farm them for a long time guardian lethal uh, so instinct bolster defiant and righteous all really, really good gear sets. And you will get these from the Forge Pass, which is in the in the uh, passes. So if you're free to play, you'll get, you'll get some of this gear and it will really help progress your uh, champions. And we only want to put this gear on our best champions. Um, if you are going to be a spender, it's £20 a pop and you get a lot for your buck. So if you want to do it, it's great. This will, you know, gear will progress your account way faster than buying like this legendary champion pass, which is £40, well overpriced in my opinion. Definitely the forge pass is the way to go. Um, but yeah, you don't, and just, uh, you know, you guys, you don't have to spend in this game to have fun. You know, you can do everything as free to play. It just takes longer. That's the only difference. So Tavern, this is where we are going to level up our champions. And if we look at upgrade, so how it works is you sort of get a champion that's uh, level 30. So they're three star champion. We get them to a max level, which is 30. If they're four, it's 40. If they're five, it's 50. If it's six, they're 60. And 60 is the max level for a champion. Then we just put food in here. We upgrade and that will um, upgrade them to the next level. So then they're four star. And then if we click on our four star champion, we can upgrade them and you can use chickens. You can even use uh, champions that are just trash as well as food. And then that gets them to the next level. And the aim of the game is you want to try in the early game. Your main focus is to try and get your starter champion to level 60 as quick as possible because they will be your campaign farmer. Then the next thing is to get five champions and build a dungeon team. And you basically want to campaign farm till all those champions are to level 60 and then you'll start farming dungeons. But I'll go more into the detail into that in the other video. Uh, upgrading your skills. So the major, major thing here, legendary skill tomes, they're so hard to come by. You wanna hold off on these. Um, you can use them on rare champions and stuff. That is a huge mistake, don't do that. Legendary books are for legendary champions only. And when you're booking a champion, you want to make sure that they're a good champion. So again, go on YouTube, Illumi Love, make sure they're a good champion. If they are, then you can invest books into them. Otherwise, don't do it because you're just going to burn a load of resources. Um, epic books are really hard to come by as well. Um, the only thing is because I'm endgame now, I'm not really getting that many epic champions that I need anymore. It's more, I need more legendaries. 
but epic books are hard to come by as well so if you see tournaments and events make sure and you know if there's legendary or epic books up for grabs make sure you do them because you do need books uh, rare books they're quite difficult in the early game to get but as you go on they get easier and again we want to save them only for our best rare champion so you'll start a champion you want to book them out because what will happen is if they've got like a passive it will increase their passive sometimes um but also it's gonna improve their skills so they'll do more damage uh, it might reduce the cooldown and or it'll have like a better chance of landing debuffs as well so you want to make sure that you do that ascension ascension is really really important so this is going to increase the stats on your champions meaning they do more damage uh, the other thing as well is that it might unlock skills for them or also um, passives as well so basically um, we'll have a champion that say this one you know she's got no she's yellow star at the moment we ascend her she gets purple stars and we want to do this all the way to the end and that will again just improve your champions and as we talked about earlier, so it goes yellow, yellow, purple, and then red. Um, but yeah, and like to red star champions is really hard. For purple, it's hell of a lot easier um, to do. And then we've got the guardian ring. So we've got the sparring pit. Um, this is a this was a misclick by me. Do not max out your sparring pit. You don't need to. It's not really going to benefit your account at all. And it's a lot of gems. As you can see, I blew 750 gems. No, yeah, 750 gems on this one. And I asked player if they would refund it. They said no. And I was like, yeah, but it was a misclick. They said no. So be very, very careful. And all you want to do is you just put in food here. I'd recommend just doing like level ones or level twos. And then um, that will you know help speed up your account. Uh, faction guardian so this isn't going to mean a lot to you in the early game um like you can see so the yellow ones are the legendary champions purple are epic and blue are rare as you can see like my account's four years old almost and we've not um have we we haven't maxed out one okay only lizardman lizardman is my only maxed out um f um faction guardian for legendaries which is just crazy so it's really really hard to do but what you want to do is if you get any dupes so you know like i said if kale should be your star champion if you've got him um if you pull another kale you you put him in here and you get like plus 10 hp and you just get loads of little stat bonuses that really really help but if you scroll up you can see that um like legendaries get a massive advantage over rares so instead of being like seven accuracy and resistance we're getting 30 and instead of three speed we're getting 10 speed and it does make a huge huge difference yeah so yeah so whoever your star champion is if you get any dupes that are rares make sure you like fill out your faction guardians because it is going to make a big difference for you empowering champions i've never done this is free to play um this is really really hard to do um it's more for big spenders and whales so what will happen is you get a champion and you can basically if you've got duplicate copies of them you put it in and they get basically better stats and it is it is really pay to win for this so we have to pay, pull a champion five times so you've got so you can, then you can plus four them and it gives you like and then on the far right you can see the extra stats again and like they get an extra 15 speed um they get extra crit damage extra crit rate i mean it is crazy that you can do this um but yeah i've never done it on my account and i probably will never be able to do it um like i said four year old account and yeah i don't see it happening anytime soon so unbiased champions so what you can do is if you've got say like a really really trash champion or i've got three duplicates here i could potentially unlock um drex and i could sell him and you get um i believe it's 50 it doesn't tell you you get 50 uh life tokens and then we can use them in the token trader so for example you could see here we could buy like a foley he's a good nuker and stuff but is he worth six legendaries? In my opinion, no. Uh, but I did buy a Morley. And the reason for this is Morley 
is god tier i was in a situation where i did have six trash champions that i could just burn through and she's great for hydra um she's also great for like arena as well and also for dungeons as well so she is like a great all-round champion but she also specializes in hydra which is end game content and she was definitely worth it and um, the rest of them though in my opinion not really worth it um but it's up to you if you if you're desperate or you want to empower a champion this is a route that you can go down but i wouldn't recommend it so guys we've looked at pretty much everything uh, we'll just have a quick look at the shop so in the shop you want to pick up your mystery shard every single day um ancient shard um you get one of these every week so make sure you grab that bank this is where you can spend money everything in here is a complete rip off so don't buy anything from here um gem shop this is where we can buy that energy pack so make sure that's where you're buying uh, your your energy uh if you're gonna buy it if you were if you're like a super low spender the daily gem pack is one of the best places um to spend and um, you get a lot out of this i think it's like 10 pounds or something definitely worth doing and then in here they hired like um every single day there'll be like a mini pack make sure you pick it up it's free sometimes you get energy sometimes you get some brews uh it, it rotates every single day but basically it's just for you to sort of come in here so you can see all the different offers um if you were gonna be a spender they do um then they do like these string packs and the best one in my opinion is probably the void string pack it's like 150 pounds though and you get about i think 40 void shards um so as you can tell this game is very very expensive um but it's definitely definitely worth it um if you're a super spender these savage sets are what most like mega whales will spend all their money on so you can see it's 50 pound a go and so that'd be like almost that's 450 pounds that is insane um but yeah if you want to spend that kind of money rather you know like farming dungeons is where you get your gear from and the best gear from however you know that like super end or really competitive players this is where they get their best gear from and they will just buy these packs out and yeah this is like the best way to get the best gear in the game as quickly as possible but for me it's a hard no-go just because look at that money it's insane uh, so there's missions you sort of want to try and get through these um you get sh uh, shards we get books we get gems as well and you also pick up arbiter on the way who is one of the best arena champions in the game uh quests you want to do these every single day so you have all these quests they're pretty straightforward so it'll be like fight five times in the arena and you get some um you get some energy then you've got your weekly quests and it's every sort of five days and then you can get more ancient shards you get some more energy as well on the way then we've got our monthly quests which take 28 days to, no 30 days to complete um, and then you get a void shard and a sacred every month so make sure you do those dailies because this makes a huge difference and then advanced quests you are not going to be able to do a lot of these in the early game but if there's any that you can do it will help because you can get like xp bonus um you get some food or well chickens and can, then we can get some skill tomes as well and then the, one of the most important things you want to do is you want to join a clan as soon as possible um being in a clan means that you can do clan boss you can also click on like see who your members are and one really really important thing here is clan chat so with clan chat you know a lot of your clan members have probably played the game longer than you they'll have lots of useful knowledge and you can ask them questions and they'll be able to help you as well you don't always need to just go on youtube um, then there's clan quests so at the beginning you'll be able to only pick up the basics because you'll you won't be able to do the expert and elite ones and then we pick up coins and you can spend these in the clan shop the only things you really want to buy from here in the beginning is just the energy uh, if you can there are legendary books that you can pick up but your clan will need to be a certain level for you to be able to pick them up sorry where do we find that out no 
Ah, okay. But basically, you won't have access to all of this. It depends on the level of your clan. But once you get higher up, you'll be able to get more and more things and be able to get legendary books as well. But for the meantime, all you want to get is just get the energy from here. Try and save coins as well, because you'll be able to use them later in the game on better items. Clan League, at the moment, it does nothing. It just adds a bronze star or a silver star onto your clan. Pretty worthless. Wouldn't worry about it. And yeah, that is pretty much okay. Oh, actually, got the index as well. So index uh, in here, you can like look at champions and you can look at champions that you've already got, but also champions you don't have. You can click on them, look at their like skills, and see what they what they do. Um, pretty cool. And also, like you know, you can just say, oh, like if you've got your favorite champion, you can just sort of just look at their skin as well if you want to do that. And then we've also got our champions. So if we click here, you can see every single champion that we've got in the account. And this, as you can see, this is like a four-year-old account. So we've got a whole bunch of legendaries. Then we've got our epics, and then we've got our, our rares. And then underneath, um, so this ranks them in order of rank. So um, under you can see there's legendaries down here. It's just because they aren't on the same level. Like they're not fully maxed out yet. So when they're fully maxed out, they'll they'll bump up the list. So let's just have a quick look at gear. I'm just going to bring up a new car. So for nukas, what you want to do is don't worry about the gear sets now because um, you're not going to be able to do a lot of this. But if you can, you want to try and match up gear. So if we, if I was to put on two pieces of offense gear, we get plus 15% extra attack, which means we'll do more damage. Um, most of your nukas will be attack based, um, but let's not worry about defense nukas and HP nukas. It's getting it's getting too complicated. I mean, every time you pull champion, you should just go on YouTube and look at builds and guides for them because you'll see how you should build them. But just to give you guys like a quick rundown, so um, on your chest pieces, you want attack percentage for attack champions. If you've got crit rate and speed as well, even better. So that's your substats down here. Um, and then if we look at shield, um, so just to mention as well, gloves um, can have certain stats and so can chest and boots. Um, the sword will always be flat attack. Helmet will always be H, uh, flat HP and shield will always be flat defense. So for gloves, uh, crit rate gloves are going to be really, really good for the early game. Uh, in the end game, we move over to crit damage gloves and they will be your best best gloves um, for damage dealers. But um, if there's like defense uh, percentage or HP percentage, you want to hold on to those as well. And ideally you want substats with speed on them. Uh, it just makes your champions better. It really it just it just makes a huge, huge difference. Uh, chess pieces, we want, um, again, defense percentage. Um, flat accuracy, flat resistance are good as well. And then with boots, um, most of the boots that you're going to have in the beginning are just going to be speed. Speed boots are, you'll be using it probably 100% of the time at the beginning of the game. Um, just because, again, your champions are going to be so slow, they'll just die because they're not going to get turns. And then later in the game, you can swap these out for HP, a defense, and attack percentage. But don't worry about it for now. Literally just get speed. It makes a huge, huge difference. Um, and just want to quickly shout out some gear sets that are going to help you in the early game. Speed is key. Speed is the best gear set in the game. It's the great from beginner to end game is the best set. So make sure you hold on to that. Crit rate is a really good gear set as well um, for the early game. And the one that we're looking for is life steal. So basically you need to put on four pieces on a champion. And what happens is basically you can heal yourself from the damage that you do. So if you hit the enemy, you're going to heal all up and you are probably going to put life steal on every single champion in the beginning of the game, especially your campaign farmer it is just a God tier set in the early game and mid game. Uh, when you progress into late game, it really does fall off and you will stop using it. And just another really good set you can use is regeneration as well. So regeneration set, it's a great gear set. 
and you will be using it um like from beginning to late um but yeah this is more for like revivers and healers but great great gear set so that is the end of the video guys i hope this helps you out make sure you watch part two to learn about the campaign dungeons and arena please leave me a cheeky thumbs up make sure you smash 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 that subscribe and i'll see you all in a video soon peace